We begin tonight with a CBC News exclusive related to the investigation into robocalls that misled voters during the last election. We've learned that one of the key players from the Conservative campaign in Guelph has just signed an immunity agreement with the Crown Attorney. That means a man named Andrew Prescott can now give information as a witness with the guarantee he will not face prosecution. So what was Prescott's role in the campaign? What does this all mean for the ongoing case? The CBC's Laura Payton joins me now with exclusive details on a story she broke today, and you can read about it on cbc.ca. All right, first, what, let's just go over exactly what was the break in the story. What did you learn today? Well, today we learned, Evan, that Andrew Prescott, uh, who was the deputy campaign manager on this campaign in Guelph, he is not going to be facing prosecution uh, for whatever he tells investigators into the misleading robocalls case. We don't know what he knows. Uh, we don't know whether prosecutors are looking at him, but we know that whatever he tells them, he won't be facing prosecution. He's a witness only in this case. Now, his name comes up a couple of times in all of these court documents we've covered previously into the misleading robocalls in Guelph in the last federal election. Uh, we know that he held the campaign account for Rack 9, which was the same company used to make the uh, illegal misleading calls. He also had access to the Conservative Party database of supporters and non-supporters. Uh, there was also uh, th there were two accounts, the illegal one, the campaign one. Both of them logged in within a few minutes of each other. So all of these questions kind of surrounding his campaign account. Uh, we actually have a, a photo so people can see what he looks like. People probably aren't familiar with him. Yeah. Even a lot of people in Ottawa actually aren't familiar with him. He's there uh, on the right-hand side of the photo next to the conservative candidate from Guelph, Marty Burke. Then on the left, we have Michael Sona. They all worked on the campaign together. This could be bad news for Michael Sona, who is the only person so far charged in connection with this case. All right. Let, let's, uh, if you see that picture, the guy on the far left, and Laura, you talk about, that's Michael Sona. There he is on the far left. He's been on this program. Uh, he, we did a long interview with him. He's the only guy thus far charged. And he knows this Michael Prescott very well, uh, Andrew Prescott very well, as you talk about. Uh, now Prescott's got immunity. Uh, Michael Sona's case is going to go to court. You say it's bad news for him. Why? Well, just because there's so many questions about uh, about all of the access uh, to RAC 9, um, Michael Sona is the only person charged. Nobody is sitting down to talk to Elections Canada. Uh, um, they all, of course, deny involvement. Andrew Prescott has said in the past when you spoke to Michael Sona, he had nothing to do with it. Sona as well says he had nothing to do with this. All right, so what's next in the case? Now what do we watch for? So the, uh, the next court date for SONA is June 2nd. It could be a preliminary hearing or it could go straight to trial, depending on whether, what he wants to do with it. So this is something where we may see Prescott testify. That seems to be what the Crown would like, and we'll be watching to see what comes out of it. So far, what we do know, now that Prescott's got immunity from the Crown, what's interesting here also is that SONA has said he's innocent. He never could have done it. Uh, he's, uh, he'll have to face trial, you know, this court date. But then the question is, if he didn't do it, who did? And maybe is it just a one-man job? That's so right. lots of questions. Sona said that he didn't have the SIMS access, the database access, all the phone numbers. So that is something that, that's one of those key parts that's missing right now. Laura Payton's got lots more on that. Uh, latest development in the robocall story at cbc.ca. I checked that story out. Thanks, Laura. Thank you.